detective series he shares with Glynis Barber. Dempsey and Makepeace. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dempsey. Now, from reading, from reading the copious notes that our researchers provide me on you, you, you were a bit of a rough diamond before you became an actor. Well, yeah, I mean, they didn't exactly have charm school, you know, in Brooklyn, but, uh, I mean, that's the way I grew up, it was in the streets. There was talk that you worked for the, for the syndicate. The mob. Quiet talk, I hope. Uh, I, d I did, actually, after, uh, well, during high school, I worked for these guys. My job was to drive a brand new car and uh, deliver envelopes. <laughs> and uh, one day I, I took a look at an envelope. I saw a lot of cash. I sealed it back up. I delivered the envelope. I came back. The guy grabs me and he says, you don't open envelopes. I said, I didn't take nothing. He said, that's why we're talking. Right? And so I stayed working with these guys for a while. And I, I looked around. I was paying attention. See, it's all straight business. You know, I never had to do anything dirty. I mean, you know. Basically, I was a diverter. Things that were supposed to go someplace went someplace else, right? So, uh, I decided one day I figured out how to make more money for these guys than they were doing. So I said, listen, I could turn this into something. And when they stopped laughing, they, they started to listen. And I said, give me a few grand, and, I, and I'll show you what I can do. They said, you lose this, don't come back. So I went into one of the major department chains, you know, uh, in New York, and I paid off this guy, got in to see this buyer, and he says, how'd you get in here? I said, they gave that guy 50 bucks. He says, what do you want? I said, I want you to buy this. He says, I already got that. I said, here's a thousand. I'll give you another one at Christmas, and I'll give you 3% of everything you write in a year's time. He says, you're kind of young to be doing this, aren't you? I said, so is President Kennedy. We all got to make a living. <laughs> but uh, that's eventually how it led me to acting. Yeah, I mean, you applied the same techniques to getting into acting, did you? A bit of bribery and corruption? Yeah, but they wouldn't take a bribe. This guy, I go in, I, I don't know anything about acting. I draw, I had this caddy convertible, you know, silk suit, Simon, pinky ring. I'm all of like... Uh, How 19, old are you? 19, I think. Right? So I go in, I said to the guy, listen, I want to be an actor. The guy says, oh, here's a book of scenes. You set up an audition. I said, all right. How much? He says, the tuition is discussed after... You know, you, you uh, audition. I said, I don't know about auditioning. I got to learn how to act first for audition. It makes sense to me. How much? He said, sorry. I said, look, 500. He said, the tuition is less than that. And it's half. I said, F make it a thousand. He says, no. I said, whoa, okay, okay. So I take the scenes, right? And I looked through them. They were probably classics. I don't know. I, I didn't know anything about plays. I said, this isn't acting. So I bought a copy of Hamlet. I flipped through it and I, oh, here it is. I heard of this one, right? To be and not to be. So I memorize it, and I go in, and there's all these people dressed like, you know, everything you can imagine. They're all in character, you know. I don't know, I'm in a three-piece suit. <laughs> so I go in, and there's this panel. I mean, they're from Playhouse 90, Studio One. This is, you know, theater. And uh, they said, what are you going to do for us? I said, I'm one. I said, it's very impressive. Uh, take your time, prepare. I said, hey, I know the words. So, they said, all right. I said, hey, <clears throat> to be. Well, not to be, not question, right? <laughs> well, the first guy starts like, when I got this bad bodkin, I didn't know that was a knife on she that I go, this bad bodkin, I tear my shirt open. The first guy starts laughing, he bumps into the second guy, and I never heard the rest of it, and that was the end of it. They admitted me to the academy. And <laughs> the first play I get is uh, the lead in Much Ado About Nothing, right? Now, I'm in tights. Now, the neighborhood I grew up in, I'm, <laughs> I don't want to go to see me, right? So, I'm out there, I come back in, the director comes running back and says, uh, where's your dance belt? I said, what's that? He says, it goes under your tights. <laughs> I raised my voice an octave. I couldn't wear it, you know? So he said, you keep the, it's with the lights and the tights. He says, everything's showing. So I, they said, you're on. So I grabbed this handful of scarves and I jammed it in my face. <laughs> I went out there, I said, I will live and die hot. Nobody cares what I'm saying anymore. Right? <laughs> anyway, it worked. Yeah. They think that they obviously thought Rudolph the Riot would come on. <laughs> Probably that's the reason that uh, one of the things I remember you for is, is that those steamy love scenes that you played in Rich and Famous, for instance, with Jacqueline Bisset. Yeah, that was probably the hardest scene yeah. that I've ever done. It was very professional, though. In an aeroplane loop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was very professional. I, uh, Jacqueline's a very professional actress. And uh, I but how do you get? How do you get... <clears throat> yourselves into the right frame of mind for a scene like that. Well, we had different ways for different folks, you know. 
I, and, uh, I was kind of doing it alone. Uh, <laughs> Jacqueline uh, knocked on, the, on my dressing room door. She said, do you think we should rehearse? And it's hard to rehearse a scene like that because, you, you know, you, but you have to choreograph it. Otherwise, you get arms and things in the yeah. way. And so she said, uh, I think we should break it into beats. I didn't quite understand how, you know, but she said, uh, now, the way I see it, who would kiss who first? I said, well, I, I would probably kiss you first. She goes, all right. All right. So I kiss her. And she says, okay, now I'll, I'll kiss you. I said, oh, okay. So she kisses me. And I said, now I'll kiss your neck. And she says, mm. So I kiss her neck. <laughs> I says, and I'll kiss your neck. Uh -huh. And she kisses my neck. And then I said, um, now I think I'll... Uh, And then she says, well, I'll tear open your shirt, and then pretty soon they knock on the door, ready? I said, definitely. What do people expect you to be as, as macho in real life as, say, Jim, Jim Dempsey is? I, I don't know. I think sometimes. I, I, you know, I mean, it's, it's basically a character. If you want to hear a story, um, you know, the press has given us kind of a time, you know. But, but it's the romance between you and Glenn. Yes. Yeah. But before the romance, I mean, before anything at all, I mean, before even we knew, I mean, it was, um, uh, you know, she had just separated about a month from her uh, previous boyfriend, and uh, we, nothing had happened, I mean, it wasn't an inkling, you know, and it just turned out by a series of coincidences, we had a luncheon, I mean, we actually broke for lunch, they didn't have anything for us to do, we were off for a couple hours, so I said, let's go back, I had this cook, I said, he'll make us lunch, that was the one day he didn't show up, I was in wardrobe, didn't have any money or the keys. So she said, well, I have some salad stuff. Let's go to my place. And that was the day that her ex had been busted for uh, drinking and driving. So he gave his address, and all of a sudden, wham, they were outside. Now, she, you know, is like Snow White. You know, I mean, all of a sudden, she says, she got really crazy. She thinks, oh, my God, they're going to think, and you're here, and then he's going to be, and it's not at all. What are we going to do? So I said, I open the window, and I climb out on this ledge. And she says, what are you doing? I said, well, I can jump down between... The, the jungle gym and the clothesline, I roll in that glass, I go, you know, I go over the, uh, the fence, and she says, what are you talking about? I said, what am I talking about? I'm scared of heights. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm frozen to the wall on this ledge, right? Uh, so I, I inch my way in, and uh, I call up the production, and we had our own police cars and SI-10 cars show up, take away the press. She goes out with two guys, the producer and the first assistant, looking very vicious, and drives off. I came out five minutes later, went, taxi? You know, the whole thing blew over. Yeah. Are you going to make England your home now? Have you have you settled? Yeah. Definitely. This is my home. Yeah. It's, 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 it's great. It is great. I mean, this oh. kind of acceptance and the show and just the light. And, I mean, this is a great city. And Glynis. And Glynis. <laughs> are we going to see? We're going to see some more of Dempsey and Mackey. You are. It's going to uh, start. Uh, we're going to start shooting the third series in January. And we look forward to seeing. Yeah. It's nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you.